How to fit new front discs and pads to your Hyundai i10. How easy is it? Maybe I can even do it. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here on a blustery day in Lincolnshire. Behind me is my mum's 2015 Hyundai i10. She's owned it for a few years and recently dad and I have fitted a new timing chain to the car. That video is on the channel if you want to take a look at that. We've been to our local motor factors and spent about 50 pounds on some new Apex front discs and blue front front pads. In this video then, Dad is going to show us a how-to step-by-step guide to do the job yourselves and maybe save a little bit of money by not taking it to your local garage. Morning Sunshine. Morning Squire. How are you doing? All right, thank you. Uh, we're going to be fitting new front discs and pads to Mum's Hyundai. You've estimated around, what, 40 minutes to an hour's job? Yeah. What sort of tools do we need to do it? Balance, sockets, crowbars, and an angle grinder yeah. with, a, with a wire wheel on there. You ain't got to use that, you could just use some memory cloth and what have you. Uh, £18 for the pads, £30 for the discs. Yeah, and a bit more, really. And a bit more. A Is that the sort code. of average price you'd expect to no, pay? No, I've got a discount code from Carousel so you, Car you Parts. you think that's a good price? Not Carousel Car Parts, who was it? Power Parts in Motion. Car Parts in pa Motion, parts something, parts something in motion, like that. Yeah. Talk us quickly through the process, how are we going to do this? Back it up, put some axle stands under it, take the wheels off. Yep. Then we'll take the calipers off, take the pads out, take yep. the discs off, make sure the bits are right, yep. and put the new bits on. Okay, let's do it. This is our first how-to video, so you are going to teach us Ooh. how to do it. How yeah, not to do it. So we're going to jack the car up both sides at the same time because we've got two jacks. If you haven't got the ability to have two jacks, then uh, do it one side at a time. I'm not putting it under the jacking point, I'm putting it under the mounting bolts for the front subframe. Why is it that you are... I don't want to mark the seal. Yep, okay, fair enough. Once you've got your jacks in place and the car jacked up, it's time to get your axle stands. But before we get ahead of ourselves, it's time to crack the wheel nuts off so you can get the wheels off. On this car, the socket you're going to need is a 22 mil. If you've got one, I should use one of these with a sleeve on to save you marking your wheel trim. Where can you buy some proper wheel nut sockets? The middle of Lidl. Okay, so you've cracked the wheel nuts off, so the wheels are uh, loose. Now time to jack the car up properly and then put your axle stands in. And if there's two of you, you can do it evenly. Careful not to hit the bottom of your wheel arch or sill with your jack handle. And make sure you pop your axle stands in the right place. Where would you suggest is a good place to put the axle stands? Subframe. Done the subframe. You've got a block of wood there, what's that all about? Save me scratching my subframe. Whilst Dad puts the other axle stand in and puts the uh, jack down without losing the sleeve, I can take this wheel off. Put your wheel trim safe to one side, last thing you want to do is stand on it and break it and off comes your wheel. Again, put it safe to the side. Open your bonnet, take the top off your brake fluid reservoir so you can see how it is, because when we push the pistons back, the fluid's going to come back up. Off comes the other side. Same again, off comes a wheel trim. Don't stand on that. Off comes a wheel. Pull the steering into lock so you can get at it. And, and then, then using what size spanner? It's a 14. And using a size 14 socket, take the bolt out of the caliper and flip the caliper up. You could then look at the pads and remove the pads. They literally just unclip. While I'm there though, I've took one pad out. I'm going to put my crowbar in. And push the piston back. Be gentle, don't want to damage anything. I'm keeping my eye on the brake fluid to so make sure it doesn't overflow. So the piston's been pushed back. And then you get your caliper. Slide the caliper off. Just examine everything, make sure it's all all right. Hook your caliper out the way, best practice, onto a spring or somewhere. Now you can take out the next pad. Many of times I've been somewhere and seen somebody and they've got this like that. So I, bad practice to and hang I said down on the Good job they're not doing a skills test. Right then. This gives us a perfect opportunity to check out the old pads which as you can see there is still some meat on there but they are getting quite warm. Next port of call is to remove the pad carrier that's held in place by 17 mil bolts get your socket on there and your breaker bar and carefully remove that. We're going to have to get the workshop manual out later son 
So we've got the correct torque wrench for this. Off it comes. Out comes the bolts and the pad carrier will just lift away. Now we've cross-referenced the parts before we've bought them, but before we start ripping everything else apart, we're gonna just double check the parts against what we've got here. The blueprint kit comes with new shims and new clips. Next, take out the screws yeah. that hold the disc into place. You really need an impact driver for them. Put those screws safe to one side. Those are what hold the disc in place. With those removed, you're now in a position to take the disc off the hub. And now we can check out the condition of the disc. You can see there is a rusty lip on the outside there. A bit of pitting, but no major scores or damage. This side, not looking too bad either. That disc could technically be cleaned up and reused. It isn't too bad. However, best practice, and it isn't our car, we're going to be fitting a new disc with the new pads. Minimum thickness, 16 millimetres. They're on the service limit, so they are due for changing. One of the reasons that we are changing the discs and pads is that the brakes seem to grab quite dramatically on the car. It's done it ever since Mum's owned the car, and we're hoping that uh, giving it this service is gonna fix that problem. Now I've got them side by side, you can see that they are the right thing. It's best practice at this stage to use some brake cleaner to get the grease and production oils um, off the new disc. Nice and clean. Daz just been to the shop to get some milk for a cup of tea and meanwhile, Apprentice of the Week has stripped down the offside, exactly the same as uh, the other side. So for those of you that say I don't do the spannering, I've been doing the spannering. Right, you've been to the shop, you've got the milk, we can have a cup of tea. Yeah. What's next on the how-to? Clean up your pad carrier. So we've checked the brake pads, we've cleaned the brake discs, and now as you say, it's time to clean up the pad carrier. What are we cleaning up with, a file? Wire brush and a file. Make sure you don't damage the rubber boots on these uh, slides. So you get all the corrosion out of there. The kit that we've bought comes with new pad holding clips. Uh, sometimes they don't, if they don't, you're gonna have to clean these up as well, but thankfully, uh, it's come with uh, new clips. Main thing is to get this clean. That's the main thing. Why is it really important to get this clean? Because your new pads won't fit properly and they'll tend to be seized up. This, main, this is the important bit, is to get this lot, all the corrosion out of there. Some people would use a, a light spill of copper grease for this. We've got special, I think it's 2NAP121, one, one, isn't it? It's proper brake spray. Yeah. You, you could use a very thin film of copper slip if you want. Stops it corroding so badly. Once you've got that done, fit the new shims into the pad carrier. They clip just in place. You can't really get them wrong. No, you can't. Some cars you can. Some cars are a bit of a uh, mastermind job to get the right ones. Make sure they're nice and tight in place. And whilst we've got the tools out on the bench, we're gonna do exactly the same with the other side. Now it's time to clean the flange, uh, which is this bit here. Using suitable eye protection and caution, you can use a wire brush on an angle grinder, but you've gotta be careful of these studs. These aren't too bad, and actually it's gonna be more sensible for us to use well, hand tools and a wire brush in there to clean that flange. So I've given that uh, yeah, flange yeah. a little tickle actually with the wire brush, but the bits yeah. that you can't get at. Let's, let's face it, you don't need an angle grinder. As long as you've got patience, you can set to use of some abrasive paper. paper. And what's the benefit of cleaning that flange up? It's to make sure the disc is fitting smoothly and flat against here. Because if the disc runs out of true and wobbles, you don't notice a problem until about two or 3,000 mile, and the disc has worn more one place than another. So the flange has now been clean, it's time to put the disc on. And there is a right and wrong way to do this. These screws must align with these Oh, hard, ever hard. All right, what's that? Oh, hard, ever hard. What I'll, you got there? I want to draw your attention to the brake disc fitting instructions. Oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Before you go crazed and slap it on there, follow the brake disc instructions. Da, da, da. So these instructions tell us that you need to do some checks. 
Using a dial test indicator, check that the run out does not exceed 0.08 mil. Oh, what's that in English? Refit the disc the same way that you took it off. Okay, so we've got a tool out as per yeah. the instructions, yep. which is a dial test indicator. And I want to shout out Steve, who uh, gifted us this recently to use on the channel. Just talk us through what this, uh, what this tool actually is and what it does. It measures in thousandths of an inch. Mm. But what I'm going to at is 0 0.8. I was aiming for 2 thou. Yep. But that's 3 thou. So their figures is 3 thou run out. Okay. We're basically seeing how much wobble there is on the disc. Okay, so how does it work? You put that dial on the... Uh, the pointer there, look. Yeah. It presses against the disc. Make sure that's clamped securely. Push that against there. Zero it. And as you turn that, it will show you the resistance or the tolerance, won't it? It tells you how much that's moving. Yeah, and how much is it moving? Well, now it's settled down, look. Hardly any. One thou. So we're well within tolerance. We're really well within tolerance. Of what the instructions say. If it was say. wrong, what I'd do is take the screws out, turn it round half a turn to see if it's better. Yep. So that, that is due to the, clean, the cleanliness of the flange. That's why, that's the important bit about it, mate. Yep, good stuff. To clean your flange before you stick your disc on. Coupland's top tip. Clean your flange. And then, same again, to do it the other side. My problem is I don't know where my disc is. Hang on a minute, I'll just visit Discs R Us and get it for you. Let's just move it. Here's one I degreased earlier, my friend. Good man. Apprentice of the week. On goes that disc. In goes the screws. Same again this side with the dial gauge indicator then. Hopefully we've got the same sort of tolerance. I was just having a conversation off camera about the, um, the discs that were on the car. We believe they were or are the genuine original discs that were on the car when uh, when it was manufactured so definitely well within being replaced so what's next on the project tea break have a tea break tea break over and it's time to continue putting it back together it's time to put the refurbished pad carrier back on the car on it goes at the moment those are just finger tight so torque the pad carrier bolts up to what sorry 78.5 to 98.1 the workshop manual says i've set that to 80. it looks fairly tight to me it is very tight yes you're right now to do the other side we're going to do this in stages just so we don't get confused same again then torques these up to 20 newton meters was it no what was we talking up to I've set that to 80 because the specification is 78.5 to 98.1. They're in place and torqued. Now it's time to fit your pads. For this next bit, you're going to need some copper grease. This is the correct configuration for your brakes. The brake squawker or brake wear indicator needs to be at the top on the inside. So now it's time to put the pads in properly. That was a test run to make sure that they did fit and nothing was binding. There's a metal shim here that the piston pushes against. Um, I've taken that off the old pad and put it on the new one. That needs a, a good old clean, but a uh, little lightest smearing of copper grease on there you need to put. So copper slip, a little bit on here, a little bit on here, and the lightest bit on here. Do not get copper slip on your brake disc or on your brake pads. That would be bad news. And then you can slide that, clip that into place. Make sure it's in the right place. It's in. None on here. None on there. All on there. And that's in place. Make sure that your slides work properly before you put your caliper back on. One, two, make sure there's no damage to these plastic rubber bits here. And then it's time to put the caliper back on. Remember we've hung it up. Don't forget yeah, take that off. to take that out of there. And we wound the caliper back when we took it off the car. It does need winding just a little bit further back because obviously these brakes are much more meatier than they were. We're going to use a proper tool 
to wind that caliper back. Make sure you don't twist your brake hose. So we're talking now then up, what are they, sorry? 21.6 to 31.4. Okay. I've set your torque range to 25. There we go, that's that one. And that's that one. In theory, that's now done, apart from pumping out the uh, piston. Now to spin it and do the other side. Same again, this side, I've taken off that shim, giving it a clean. Remember the squawker goes on the inside at the top. Tiniest bit of copper slip on here, copper slip on the ends. Now, because I'm not a mechanic, I'm not an expert, I'm gonna get Dan to just double check that for us, make sure it's okay. It's not my car, it's mum's car. And obviously it's the important bit, it's the brakes. So uh, if you have got a second pair of eyes, it is good, best practice to get them to check it over for you as well. Are you happy with that? Yes, sir. Lovely, I'll put the caliper back on. So back on goes the caliper. We've wound that back already. Again, make sure you take that out of there. You don't want that uh, going wrong. In goes that pin. In goes the caliper, watch your fingers. In goes this bolt. So that's a bit loose. Once we pump the pedal out, that'll go nice and tight. Get your apprentice to pump the pedal out and so we can see if the piston goes back. It is best practice to bleed the brakes at the same time. We have, however, pretty much just done the brake bleeding when we've serviced the car about a month ago. Kind of point somebody out there. So as you can see, the brake fluid reservoir is now a little bit too full because we've pushed the pads back because we've got thicker pads than we had. So we are going to just use a pipette to take some of that out of there. Do not get brake fluid on, on your, your paintwork. Paint or on your engine or on your granny or anywhere really. That's not a pipette, that's a turkey baster. It jolly well is. Perfect. And with all that done, well, you've pretty much changed the brake discs and pads. The next thing and the last thing to do is to uh, put the wheels back on. Aha! On she goes. Right, that's on. It will obviously need talking up. Next one. Now, do you feel confident to be able to do your own discs and pads on your own car as long as it went smoothly then? I do. Well, that's a good thing then, dude. Last but not least, jack the car back up to take the weight off those axle stands. Get the axle stands out. Put the car on the deck. Torque the wheels up. And go for a ride for the first 100 miles. What do you got to do? Avoid. Harsh braking. Avoid harsh braking. Who are you going to call? Dos. Harsh braking. Come on, harsh braking, help me release this. <laughs> down she goes. Make sure your jack's all the way down before you pull it out. Make sure that's tight. Fill your washer bottle up while you're here. Check your oil and levels while you're here. Job done. Last but not least, torque the wheel nuts up. What's the wheel nut torque, please? 90 to 110 Newton meters. And then arguably the most important bit, put your tools away safe. How do you think that went? You did well, son, you did well, I'm well, proud on you. It was, a, it was a dream team effort. Um, what's the main takeaway from fitting your brakes on your Hyundai i10? As long as you've not got any problems, any snags, most folks, could do it. That's a DIY job, isn't it, in yeah. my opinion? Saves Especially you. if you're careful. Yeah. Absolutely. But if it went wrong, that's where you've got a snag, isn't it? Yeah, good. Thanks for that. We'll uh, take it for a test drive. 45 cars to move first. <laughs> that went well, boy. Well, next, well. next job. Well, there you have it then, around about 40 minutes of our time and new front discs and pads for Mums Hyundai. If you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up, please, if you haven't already done so. If it's helped you, comment down below, let us know. The part numbers for the original parts are in the description too. And if you haven't already subscribed for more updates on the Hyundai i10 and the stuff that we do, please do to stay up to date with what we're getting up to. Till next time, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.
As ever, thank you for watching this video. Dad and I have selected a couple more videos for you that we think that you might like. They're here now. Just give them a click to watch them. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. It means a lot to us. Thank you.